know, I've been watching this deer all summer. I had a ladder stand in position where I just needed a westerly or northwest wind in order to get in and get out. Getting close to the opener, looking at the forecast, we're gonna have a whole week of westerly winds, and so I'm really gonna be able to hunt this deer. Wow, unbelievable. Passion for the Hunt is brought to you by Shields, Crestliner Boats, Steerka, North Dakota Tourism, Federal Premium Ammunition, Matthews Archery, Travel Manitoba, and Primo's Hunting. You know, a lot of times when I'm scouting in the summertime, I'm just trying to mix in my activity, my human intrusion with a lot of the farming and, and ranching practices that are going on, and I think sometimes as hunters, it's easy to overthink things in the sense that uh, you know you want to be really quiet, you want to be stealthy, you want to be sneaky when you're checking your trail cameras, for example, when you're scouting. You know, you got to remember too that there's sprayers that are coming through and spraying these fields. There's there's haying that's going on where you know people are sitting in an open cab, you know, haying all day long. There's you know people fixing fence. You know, there's there's just a certain amount of human encroachment that happens all in this farm country and. Uh, you know, the deer, they get used to that. You know, they're oblivious to any type of slow moving uh, mechanical machine. So a lot of times when I'm scouting, I try to, you know, I try to be conscious of that and try to mix in my activity with that. Those deer get used to people. You just got to blend in your scouting activity so you, those deer just don't realize they're getting hunted. You know, I was just joking with a buddy of mine the other day. We were joking about how when we first got trail cameras, you know, we'd set them up and how we would literally save pictures of every deer that we that we saw. And, you know, it just it was so exciting. You know, <laughs> trail cameras were a major breakthrough with hunting and with scouting. You know, and over time, you just quit saving all the pictures because you, you accumulate thousands of them. But, you know, trail cameras were a big deal and they still are a big deal. But uh, I think probably the biggest mistake I've made in my life with hunting and using trail cameras for scouting is still not spending enough time behind glass and watching and learning those deer even more because there's still a lot to learn about a deer and so sitting behind a spotting scope especially out here in you know wide open farm country you know is invaluable and it's about a week or so uh, before the archery season opener and um, you know just sitting out here just trying to get some clues you know I know that some deer are around I want to know where they're bedding. I want to know the routes that they're using just so I can pick the right location and the right wind to, to try to set up on those deer. But uh, excited about the opener. A lot of crops are coming down. A lot of wheat's getting combined. And, you know, at the harvest, you know, a lot of things getting changed, you know, because a lot of these deer will bed out some of this wheat and um, just pushes and moves some things around. So we're just doing a little bit of scouting and sitting and watching and waiting just to try to pattern these deer a little more. It's the opening day of deer season and I've been scouting all summer and there's one buck in particular that I really have my eyes on. I've been watching them all summer so hopefully that deer shows up. But regardless, it's so good to get back in the tree. It's the opening 
day of deer season and I've been scouting all summer and you know what's neat about North Dakota is the season opens September 1st and so you've got a really good chance of shooting a buck in velvet here at least the first you know three to seven days of the season but uh, right now these deer are still in their bachelor groups we're a little early but we got to try to slide in and get up into a tree stand or a ladder stand that we've got set up but uh, classic funnel route these bucks are falling along the edge of a wetland reserve program or there's some grass and there's a soybean field and these deer are just funneling back and forth through there and so we should see a lot of deer but uh, there's one buck in particular that I really have my eyes on I've been watching them all summer so hopefully that deer shows up but regardless it's so good to get back in the tree. A little bit of wind tonight, but uh, just a beautiful night. But you know, last night we had a lot of wind and rain. Hoping that uh, just a change in weather will get these deer moving. I know we're going to see a lot of deer here. Just hopefully we see the right one. But it's good to be back. You know, there's nothing more exciting to me than when you've done your scouting and you've you've got your heart set on a particular deer or maybe two deer, and uh, you know everything's set up, everything's ready. You know, you've got your your stands hung, you've got your blinds in position, everything's ready. And when you look on your phone, you can see that wind forecast, and the wind forecast is perfect for one of your best spots. And so, you know, when the opener lines up with that, that's exciting, and that's exactly what happened. You know, we have this small buck bedded out in front of us and all of a sudden this buck pops up, stands up and turns behind us and just at that time I heard like a, like almost like a sound like a sneeze, like a cough and I looked down and oh my goodness. I mean, that deer was so much bigger and wider than the smaller bucks that we'd seen earlier that night, or the does. It, you know, the back, I mean, it looked like a horse walking below the tree. And you had this big rack that just, you know, and just the most incredible sight. You know, those are the moments, those are the things that you'll remember the rest of your life, is just that glance when you first see that deer for the first time on the hoof. I knew as soon as I shot, it was a good shot. You know, I could just see the blood. You know, probably the thing that surprised me the most is just the lack of penetration. You know, that arrow didn't go in that far. It must have just hit that opposite shoulder blade and maybe even bounced back a little bit. Oh, man. Oh, my hands are just shaking. Oh, it doesn't happen like that all the time. That deer did not come from where I expected, but wow, we've got a dead buck down there. An awesome buck. Wow. Unbelievable. He went down, oh, he maybe, that deer maybe only went 150 yards. See the blood. 
Just a good shot, nice angle. Deer was quartered away. Just a perfect shot. That deer didn't go very far, but uh, time to climb out of the tree with shaky knees. That's the best feeling in the world. Doesn't always work like that. You know, first night, opening day of bow season, I can't tell you how many how many times where I've hunted days upon days trying to hunt one specific deer and you know and, and not connecting and, and actually I had to go around with this deer here last year too. So we've got a little bit of history, but uh, Awesome feeling when it all comes together. We'll get over there quick here while we still got a little bit of light and go find ourselves a buck. Oh my, look at that. <laughs> wow. Oh my. <sighs> wow, what an awesome velvet buck. Early season, there's mosquitoes buzzing around, bucks in velvet, but wow, I couldn't be happier. A lot of hard work and a lot of skull. We might have got this deer in one sit, but. Uh, can't tell you how many hours we've got into this. Just scouting and putting trail cameras out. Sometimes you get lucky too. Wow, awesome buck, awesome buck. Wow, look at the width on that. Just a stud of a deer. September 2nd here in North Dakota and after last night's success I'm up to bat and I am going to practice a couple shots make sure my bow didn't get bumped on the drive out here and also I don't do a whole lot of ground blind hunting so I'm gonna practice shooting like I'm gonna be hunting tonight which is sitting down uh, we will be shooting out of the hay bale blind so take a few shots make sure the bows on and get comfortable shooting from a seated position. Looking good. I think we're ready for tonight. It's a little bit warmer today. Wind's still blowing, but uh, the deer activity hasn't stopped at all. He's getting a lot of really good trail camera pictures, and we're just going off of the most recent information here. We'll throw out some nose jammer, and take scent free shower before we get out. I can't wait, we'll see you in the bail blind. Well, it's the second day. We filmed Jason getting a pretty nice buck last night and typically I'm behind the camera, so this is a real treat. And we're gonna head into this bail blind. Jason's got a lot of good pictures of bucks in here and Grab the Matthews and get in there and sit till dark. Can't wait. It's always fun, you know, watching somebody else hunt and watching somebody else get a deer. And you know, that's with me. You know, I'm just as excited if one of my buddies shoot a deer as if I do. You know, it's I look at it as if we're a team. You know, and uh, might not get to hang on my wall, but it, all I care about is the memory. So now that we've got one deer out of the way, you know, if we can get a second deer this week. You know, that'd make it even better. Oh, it's a warm one. We just got set up here in the blind. It's a great view. It's basically what it looks like is a pinch point where we've got water behind us. There's soybeans over here, less than 100 yards. And these deer are coming from their bed. They're bedding in the thick swamp grasses and coming up here, going to the soybeans. There's a standing cornfield back there, which on the way in, we did see a pretty nice trail. So we're hoping that they don't come from that direction because that's the way our wind's blowing. But we've got the Ozonics up. Oh, we spray down the blind and around the blind. It's warm. They should still be in velvet. We'll just sit here, watch the sunset, and hope the deer start moving.
Well, the moon is on the rise and the deer did end up moving. Uh, we started off, we saw a couple small bucks and a doe. And then, of course, after shooting time, that's when all the action happened. We ended up seeing the buck we were after. He's starting to shed his velvet. Really nice looking buck. We sat in there till dark and uh, let him move off. So, you know, we'll get after it again tomorrow, whether we're here in the hay bale or at another spot. Tomorrow's another day of hunting. Well, here we go. It's the third day of our hunt and it's the warmest day so far. It's about 82 degrees right now. Wind's blowing pretty good, but we're gonna change it up a little bit and hang a stand and sit it tonight. Uh, the tree's not big enough for both of us, so I'll be self-filming, but uh, Jason's got pictures of this nice, tall, heavy eight point. So we'll see if we can't get on him tonight and let the hay bale blind set for a day. And if we can't get it done tonight, we'll head back over there tomorrow for the last day of the hunt. So here we go in North Dakota, day three. I got the stand on. It's warm. I had to take a minute to cool off. I can see for a long ways back there. There's some just beat down trails through here. Well, unfortunately, Jason did check the trail camera after he got out of here and the one buck that we came in here after just shed his velvet and he hasn't been in here traveling through during daylight. There's a couple other bucks that look like they're still holding their velvet, but they've only been nocturnal. But we'll sit here till sunset and uh, enjoy the view. Hopefully we get some deer up on their feet tonight. Well, there he is. That's the big eight. He's out about 300 yards coming across that open. He's working his way this way and it's early, so. Just be ready here. He could walk right down this trail at any minute. Got a couple other does coming in here, so I'm gonna get quiet and see what happens. You know what I love about hunting whitetails is that they always surprise you. You just, you know, you can never assume anything. And that's what I love about it. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've been burned by that in the sense that you know, I'll have a, a picture of a deer on a trail camera and just assume where it's bedding. And I can, I can safely say that about 80% of the time I'm wrong. You know, even though, you know, you think that, you know, you have a picture of a deer, you have this just most beautiful bedding cover over here, come to find out he's bedding in a little patch of cattails over there. I mean, it's just amazing how you can assume wrong. You know, those whitetails are crafty. I mean, it just amazes me how as we're trying to pattern them, it also seems like they're trying to pattern us, and that can be pretty humbling. Well, here it is. It's the last day of our North Dakota hunt, and the weather has changed drastically from yesterday. Temperature dropped. We have front come in. It's blowing 20, 30 miles an hour right now. Yesterday, we moved this bale blind to accommodate this northwest wind, and the last time we sat here, we had the buck that we were after come in after dark and we're hoping that he shows up a little bit earlier tonight.
Well, the sun starts to set and sure enough, he shows up on the far hillside. He's working our way, but he's a long ways off and I don't think he's gonna make it to us before the end of shooting time. But what a great hunt for Jason to get that awesome buck on opening day in velvet. And every time that I sat, I saw one of the bucks that we were after. You know, that's just one of the things about hunting open country. You can see a long distance and you can usually see the deer if they're moving. So I can't wait until next year. We can try to close the distance on a couple of these North Dakota bucks.